Okay, so we're going to review for our quiz and test. So this is a quiz review, but it's also a test review over sections 4.1 through 4.3. Uh, the first thing that's going to be on your quiz and test is to graph a linear equation with a table. So what I want you to do, just right there on your desk and work together, is I want you to set up an XY table for this linear equation. Remember, you need three values. Okay, you need three values for X. All right, you don't have to graph it on your table. That's like a lot of writing, but I will show you what the graph would look like up here on the screen. So because a whole number, meaning not a fraction, is connected to X, I'm going to use negative 1, 0, and 2. If you said negative 1, 0, 1, that's totally fine, okay? Um, I'm not going to mark off for that on your test. I just I want us to keep our numbers small. All right, I've had people today asking me, can I just do negative one, zero, and one? And that would be fine. All right, so what do I do with those X values? What do I do with them, guys? What do I do with the X values? Yes, plug it in for the X in the equation and solve whatever it is, that's your Y value. All right, go ahead and plug in your X values and solve for Y. Negative two times negative one. Guys, it really does help to write it out. Plus one, okay? Negative two times negative one is positive two. Positive two plus one is three. So that's why I plug in three for y. Now the zero is always gonna be the easiest. What's negative two times zero? Zero, zero plus one is just one, okay? So definitely uh, that one's a little easier. now. On this last one, again, it's helpful if you just write it out. Just show the substitution, okay? Y equals negative 2 times positive 2 plus 1. I'm plugging in the positive 2 where X went in the formula. Negative 2 times positive 2 is what? Negative 4 plus 1. You say, well, Miss Kinder, do I need to write this? No, you don't. You could do it mental math, but... I've seen mistake after mistake today because they're trying to do it mental math and then they mess it up. If I'm looking at it, it makes it a lot easier to see this is negative three. All right, so now look up here. I'm gonna graph them. All right, over zero up one, uh, left one up three, and right two down three, okay? If I did this right, it should form a straight line when I connect all these points. I'm trying the straight line. Uh, good enough. Okay, arrows on both ends. What does the line represent? What does the line on the graph represent? What does the actual line show me? All the possible solutions. The line on the graph shows me all the possible solutions. Now, I did see, I did hear someone say something about the origin. Does this line pass through the origin? No. So it is not proportional, okay? Now, I'm tying in a lot of concepts here, right? But you see how it doesn't pass through zero, zero. What does that mean? That means there's some kind of a base value. Basically, what I'm saying is if this was a taxi ride, it's gonna cost $1 just for the taxi to come to your house before you ever even drive anywhere. Remember how we were using those examples yesterday? All right, if I've gone zero miles, I should be paying zero dollars. That's a proportional relationship. So this is not. Could I also find the slope? Could I find the slope based on the graph? Yes. I absolutely could. Okay, is my slope positive or negative here? Negative. It's negative, it's going down. From left to right, it's going down. Now let's count our rise and run. Between two points, I go down how many? One, two, down two, and over how many? One. Can I put that into a fraction? Yes. Negative two over one. Okay, that's my slope. What if I had counted my second two points, though? What if I had counted, instead of the first two, what if I had counted... From this one, negative one, two, three, four, over two. Negative four over two. Is that a different value? Yes. No. 
No, it's not. Because if I what, Juvenet? If I reduced it, it would be the exact same thing. So don't be afraid. Oh, what if I pick the wrong two points? As long as you pick, as long as you pick them in a row, okay, one after another, then you'll be fine doing the rise over run. You just reduce it. Okay, so there was a lot going on there. A lot going on. Okay, let's focus on slope. Over the, these next two slides, we're going to focus on slope. I want you to find the slope of the line and tell me if it's positive or negative. All right, from between the two points, I go down one, two, three, four. So that's a negative four over one, two, three, four over positive four. So that's negative one over one or just negative one. Either answer would be fine. Now, the reason I would leave it a fraction is so I still have the rise over run. All right, and you'll see what I'm talking about more uh, after this next test when we actually start graphing with slope. It's helpful to see rise over run to keep it over one. All right, so is this positive or negative? negative. It's negative. Okay, it's negative. Now let's find the slope using ordered pairs. So what did I need, what, what do I need in order to find slope with ordered pairs? What do I need? Okay, I can kind of see you guys saying what? The formula. All right, let's say it together. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Without the formula, you will have no idea where to put these numbers. But actually, not knowing the sequence, how do I know which one is the Y2 value in Y1 in X2 and X1? I need to go by my sequence. Let's say the sequence together. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Okay, now I know which number is my Y2 and my Y1. Go ahead and plug them in and find your slope. So, Y2 minus Y1. Wait, did y'all catch that double negative? Yes. Okay, over X2 minus X1. Wait, is this going to be zero? Negative 3 minus 3? No, it's not going to be 0 because that's same same sign, add and keep, remember? Negative 6. And before I can do my numerator, I have to change my double negative 6 over negative 6. You say, well, wait a second, Miss Kinder. Run is never negative. My run is never supposed to be negative. Technically, when a fraction is, is negative, you can attach the negative to either numerator or denominator. So we are going to move that negative out of the run, okay? This is the same thing as negative 1 over 1 or just negative 1, all right? And again, sometimes we like to leave it rise over run to help us graph it, and that would be in the future, not for this test, but um, on the next test. Okay, how do we do on that, guys? Do you see why I move the negative out of the denominator? Right, because the run is not negative, but that still leaves my slope negative. Okay, which that's what it was supposed to be. Okay, let's talk proportional relationships. On your quiz and your test, I'm going to give you a table of values. I'm going to give you the graphs. Okay, do they indicate a proportional relationship? Here's how I know. What operation can I do to X to get to Y? Whatever I multiply or divide by, that number is my rate. That's my slope. But I have to make sure it's the same rate for all of my ordered pairs. Okay? If my answer is yes, I make that rate my formula, my equation. I have to write a full equation. Based on the formula, y equals mx, okay? This is my basis, okay? All right, let's see who can figure it out. Do I have a proportional relationship? Because 3 times what is 9? 3. 5 times 3 is? 
15. 7 times 3 is 21, and 9 times 3 is 27. So for each of these, do you agree your rate is 3? So M equals, guys, this is so important, M equals 3. That's your rate, what's being multiplied, okay? Are you with me? That's what you plug in for M in the formula. So you would say Y equals 3X, all right? So if you had said, Miss Kinder, I'm multiplying all of these by 4, guess what would be in front of the X? A 4, okay? <laughs> you're fine, you're fine. All right, any questions? Are we clearing that up? So when I say write an equation, are you going to be able to do it? If I needed to, what if this was flipped and I needed to divide by three? What would my slope have been, Addison? One third, okay? So if I have to divide, my slope will be a fraction. All right, let's look at the next problem. Um, on the next one, I need to know, does this graph indicate a proportional relationship? If it's no, tell me why not. If it's yes, tell me why, and then I need the equation. All right, yes or no, guys? No. No, why not? Okay, does not pass through origin. Does not pass through the origin. Okay, we can do some abbreviations. All right, through the origin. All right, so that one's no, and that's all I can say. All right, now on this one, I need you to answer yes or no, obviously, it's the other answer, <laughs> okay? Tell me why, and then give me the equation that would represent this graph. Okay, so is it yes or no? Yes. Yes, because why? It passes yep, it passes through the origin, okay, so that's still my criteria. Now that I know it passes through the origin, do you guys remember what we said to, to figure out the equation? You need to know your slope. Start at the origin. You know if it's yes, it passes through zero, zero. And then just pick the next point where it crosses an x, y right on the dot. Do you see how right here it crosses x and y? It'll be easier for you to see on your quiz. But do you see here how the line passes straight through where those grid lines intersect? Okay, so all I have to do is find two points. Now, I could have skipped, look, I could have skipped that point and I could have done this point. Okay, I just would be reducing it. It doesn't, don't worry like, oh, well, what if I don't pick the exact one? I could have picked this one down here. And as long as I reduce it, I'm still going to get the same slope. But if I pick the very next point, I shouldn't have to reduce it. All right, so how many do I go down to get to the next point? One. Negative one. How many do I go over? One. Positive one. So M equals negative one over one. But this is not my equation. We actually just did this in the last example. I want you to use this now to write your equation. Okay, we know what the slope is. We found the slope, but now I need you to write the equation. What would the equation be? Does anybody know? Emma, do you know? Kyla, Juvenette, anybody? It is the basis of y equals mx, Maddox. Yes, y equals negative one times x, or if you said negative one over one. All right, so find M, guys. When you need to write these equations, find M. Find your rate and plug it in for M. Okay, now, all right, I need to go over this modeling real life question. All right, this is very similar to um, the Titan example from 4.3. How much does it weigh on Titan versus weighing on Earth? Okay, it says the weight... Again, they're always going to tell you which stands for what. The weight Y of an object on the moon is proportional to the weight X of an object on Earth. An object that weighs 100 pounds on Earth would weigh 50 pounds on the moon. You have to find the rate, okay? So use that, use that ratio right there. Plug those values into your equation to find your rate. 
once you know the rate, you can scale it. Okay, I want you to work through this problem with your uh, table buddies. Okay, and let's see if we can come up with an equation. Remember, our basis is y equals mx. You use this information to find what m is to write your equation. All right, let's work on it. So what do we just say? 100 is your, is that your x or is that your y? That's your X because it says on Earth, and I know Earth stands for X, okay? And then what's your Y value? 50. So 50 equals 100M. Now I divide both sides by 100, and M equals 1 half. But remember, this is not my equation. This is not my equation. What is my equation? Can someone different tell me? This is the third one that we've done. Um, Emma? Um, y equals one half equals x. One half x. So what does that mean? Can anybody interpret this slope for me? What does this mean about how x, remember what x stands for, relates to y? Can anybody put that into a sentence for me? Anyone? I know this is, this is the tough part because you really have to think. Maddox? Okay, good, but can you, what, what did Y stand for again? So to get the weight of Object. on the moon, Addison, could you for finish every, that? Like, for every object that's on Earth, it's half of what's on the moon. Okay, so exactly, and I would take that, all right? I know it's kind of feels a little awkward sometimes trying to piece this together. So an object on the moon would weigh how much um, compared to Earth? An object would weigh half the amount on the moon versus Earth. I don't like how I'm saying it. See, I know it's kind of awkward, right? Okay, so let's try this again. An object on the moon, on the moon would weigh half the amount. Uh, Oh my goodness, I'm saying half the amount on Earth, but that's not right. Oh my gosh, why am I drawing a blank here? An object on the moon weighs half as much as it does on Earth. Okay? And guys, I, I definitely am not um, half as much as it does on Earth. But as soon as you can put this into words... All right? As soon as you can put it into words, it's so easy to scale it, okay? For example, look at the next question. It says, how much would a person weigh on Earth if they weighed 40 pounds on the moon? Well, I know the rate now, okay? Because I've just kind of described how the rate applies. So if you weighed 40 pounds on the moon, how much would you weigh on Earth? 80 pounds. Okay, it really is that simple. And I'm not going to ask you for a whole lot of work to answer this. Okay, you did the hard part. You got the equation and the interpretation. All right. Okay, sorry it took me so many tries on that. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Um, Okay, I don't think we need to do that one. I did need to review, though. All right, let's see here. Let me change this background real quick. I just need to go over the questions that are going to be your review questions on your test. So we're done with what we need to know for the quiz, but we need to go over a few review questions for your test. You're going to have uh, an equation... Okay, let's say it's um, negative 4x minus 8 equals negative 2 times 2x minus 4. Okay, I want you to solve this equation. And then um, we need to solve for y on this next one.
Okay, so we're going to solve for y on the second one. Solve the equation on the first one and solve for y on the second one. So we have negative 4x uh, minus 8. Now we have to distribute and we get negative 4x plus 8. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. So what do you see here that's a little goofy? Same. What's the same? Uh, both sides. Negative 4x and negative 4x are the exact same value, which means when I try to add it, they're going to cancel out. Is this true? Negative 8 equals 8? No. No solution. No solution. Okay? Now let's solve for y on the other side. Okay, what do I do first to solve for y? Hopefully we're getting better at this, guys. What do I do first to solve for y? Minus 15x. Minus 15x, the whole term. Can I do 20 minus 15x? No. No. 5y equals, which term do I write first? Negative 15x. Negative 15x plus 20. Divide by 5, 5, 5. Y equals negative 3X plus 4. Okay? Now, I do have, you have a reflection and a rotation. You have three more problems that I'm going to have to continue after school, after we dismiss, because chapel schedule is a shorter class. All right, so I need to dismiss you guys, but the video will cover three more problems, the review video. Okay, so we'll pause for now. All right, something else you're gonna need to know for your test is a reflection. If I give you the ordered pair, A, negative six, four, and I asked you to reflect this in the x-axis, okay? Well, a reflection in the x-axis, do you remember which value you would do the opposite? If I'm reflecting an x, I do the opposite of y. I keep my x the same, and I do the opposite y value. Okay, so this would be my reflected ordered pair on a reflection. The next one is a 90 degree rotation clockwise okay so i'm going to give you the ordered pair let's say c um negative five three and i will give you the code so for a 90 degree clockwise rotation the code is x y and then y negative x remember your code tells you this negative tells you that you would not only flip the order but you would do the opposite sign of whatever the x value was Okay, so you're going to flip it, you're going to have C prime, your Y value stays the same, so it's still a 3, but you have to do the opposite X value. So this would be the rotation. Okay, and then the last question deals with um, one of your polygons. Let's say it's 1... This is going to take me just a minute to set up. Okay. And let's say our measurements in here are 92 degrees, um, 100 degrees, and 100 and, oh, that one's pretty far, 150 degrees, 120 degrees and 82 degrees. What is the measurement of the unknown angle? All right, so we need to solve for that. All right, so what we need to do is we first have to find the sum of all the angle measures. One, two, three, four, five. This is a six-sided figure. What do you guys remember? What's the sum of a six-sided figure? Um, yes, good job, bud. I knew that. 720 degrees. So this number is going to change depending how many sides there are. Then you have to add all of these together. So when you add them all together, you get 544 plus X equals 720. 
subtract 544 from both sides. All right, and X would be 176 degrees. All right, so finding the unknown angle measure of a polygon. And if you know that, you should be ready for your test over 4.1 to 4.3.